The mainline Toho games are somewhat classical shoot map games, where you move from level to level in a linear fashion and fight the boss at the end of each. But they do have a track record of mixing it up with sub games in between that changes the formula for something very different. And the last game to do so is Toho 18.5 with this subtitle here on screen that I tried about 20 takes off before giving up. I hate it. I can't say it. Hundredth, hundredth, hundredth. No, no, I'm giving up. Read it yourself. No matter what I think about the title, I don't think you should skip this one. Let me tell you why. In 18.5, you play as the very well-known Toa character Marisa that has set out to investigate why the ability cards from the previous game still are in high demand on the black market. The game is structured very differently from previous Toho titles, where in this game, you select a level and work your way through it in waves of enemies. All waves are time-based, so even if you kill all the enemies, they will simply respawn over and over again until time has run out. In every wave, you collect currency that you can buy more cards with when the current wave is over. These cards are only used for the current stage and range from weapons to resource improvements. After a set amount of waves, you will face off against one of the bosses on that stage and, when beaten, you bring some of the spoils of that stage back to the main menu. You also get to choose a card after beating a boss that will then be unlocked in the card shop in between levels. When beating a new level, the next one is unlocked and you can freely go back and replay any of them. In the main menu, you can equip Marisa with different cards that you have unlocked during the levels and then bought in the main menu shop. This way, you always have a way to assert some control on how you want to play. If you want to focus on completing the next stage, you might want to get an extra 1-up and add some offensive cards to your deck. If you just want to grind some more money from an easier stage, you probably want to equip a card that lets you convert enemy bullets to money and suck each little penny out of those cute looking enemies. Here's a hint from me. Out of all cards in the game, this card is the best. Wink wink. I did say earlier that the levels consist of waves, so let me clarify this a bit. What wave of enemies you encounter on the stage is randomized, so the same card deck might not work every time around, which I mostly find interesting, but I can also see that it adds some frustration for people that want to know what they're going to face off against. For example, some waves spawn enemies from the sides or behind, so having a card that deals with that is good. But if that particular wave doesn't appear in your next round, it could become a bit pointless to have that card equipped. My favorite change from almost any other shoot map game is the replacement of the bomb. The bomb is in many games your panic button. When you find yourself in a corner that you can't seem to get out of, you press it and wipe everything off the screen. The problem for me though, is that usually I want to save the bombs until I really need them. Which means, I'm usually already dead when that moment appears. In this game, you instead always have a spell that you can use freely with a short cooldown instead. The spell brings out a circle on the battlefield that first of all makes bullet move very slowly. This in turn gives you more wiggle room to create paths through enemy bullet patterns. But hitting enemy bullets with this circle also causes them to drop a shadow currency. This is the currency you're using to buy new temporary cards on the stages after every wave. When the magic circle is not placed anywhere on the stage, it is handily surrounding your character as she flies around and while there, it maintains the effect of bringing out the shadow currency when getting closer to enemies. So, in order to become stronger, you need to master using this as it's your main way of getting more cards on the stage. The other currency you get is regular gold, and this isn't used on the stage itself, but only used in the main menu to buy new cards. During each wave, you have to balance both offense and defense as well. If you kill everything too fast, the enemies will not provide enough bullets for you to farm resources from. But if you let the enemies run loose, the screen will be filled fast with bullets that might be too much for you to handle. However, this does not mean that you can beat your way through the game by just grinding the first couple of stages over and over again. You only have a set amount of slots you can equip cards in, and you unlock more by advancing through the game. The cards you select will help you out, but ultimately, it is your skill that will get you through the game. 
unless you find a few cheesy combinations that I won't spoil here. If you don't know your way around bullet hell kind of games like Toho, it will be tough, since they are called bullet hell for a reason. But since you don't have to start over from the first stage every time you die, it is a good way to practice and become better at the genre without feeling that complete sense of dread you often feel when you're doing a good run and have to redo it all again from the start due to multiple mistakes in a row on a later stage. The music is exactly what you would expect from a Toho game by this point. Except for a few returning tracks from Toho 18, the game seems to be filled with mostly new tracks from what I can tell at least. But hey, I'm also very new to the Toho scene. Overall, I like the music presented here. The lineup isn't quite as strong as it was in Toho 18, but for being one of the in-between games, I'm still surprised by the sheer amount of new music we got for this game. Here's a nitpick of mine about the game. Who decided to make the text this small when you select a card after boss fight? It's barely visible, although there is a ton of space available for the text to appear in. I mean, was this tested? Speaking about text, as of this recording, there doesn't exist any translation patches for the game. However, there exists almost no story in the game, except for a few rare occasions. So for anyone that struggles with understanding the Japanese text explained in the cards, you will have to consult the internet about those. Other than that, the game is very friendly towards non-Japanese speakers and can be purchased easily via Steam, albeit with a Japanese-only store page. I wonder if they are searching for an official translator for these games. Hmm. Ah, konnichiwa. Ne, Toho series no honyakusha wo sagashite imasu ka? What's up with this? Overall, I am very happy with the game. And it's fun that the card mechanic from Toho 18 gets new life in this game. I would recommend it to anyone that's curious about the series, since I think most people can have fun with it, even if they can't complete the whole thing. There are a few cards I would change due to balance issues, because some combinations is a bit too broken and makes other combinations less desirable. But in the end, you're able to play however you mostly want. Which is what I find so good about this game and the card mechanics. Moving forward with the franchise, it's going to be interesting to see if the series continues to delve deeper into the card mechanics or not. Would you want the card mechanics to return? Or do you want to see something new in the next Toho game? Like, subscribe and comment to make this video go to the moon! See you in the next one!